Hello and welcome to Daily Sala Digital. You're watching News Print and let's look at the updates that are making the headlines today. A four-day truce in the Israel Hamas conflict has commenced, marking a pause in the intense seven-week fighting. Qatar, the mediator, announced the ceasefire at 10:30 a.m. Indian Standard Time. The exchange of hostages starts with 13 women and children to begin around 7:30 p.m. IST, increasing to 50 over to four days. Both sides have agreed to release Palestinian prisoners held in Israeli jails. Israeli defense forces sounded sirens near Gaza Strip villages as a precaution. Despite ongoing fighting before the truce, there are signals that this pause may be temporary, raising concerns about a potential escalation of the conflict. The Afghan embassy in India officially declared its permanent closure in a statement released on Friday, citing persistent pressure from both the Taliban and the Indian government to relinquish control as a reason. The embassy had ceased its operations on September 30, coinciding with the departure of senior Afghan diplomats and the ambassador representing the government of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan in India. Despite an eight-week period of waiting, the embassy stated that the objectives related to the visa extension for diplomats and a change in the conduct of the Indian government were not achieved. Currently, there are no diplomats representing the Afghan Republic in India. The embassy reported that those who served in the national capital have safely relocated to third countries. Minister of State for Electronics and IT Rajiv Chandrasekhar announced the government's commitment to aiding citizens in filing FIRs against social media platforms for IT rules violations, particularly objectionable content such as deepfakes. The ministry will establish a user-friendly platform for reporting violations and platforms have been given a seven-day window to align with IT rules. Chandrasekhar emphasized zero tolerance for the rule violations and outlined the nomination of a Rule 7 officer to facilitate citizen complaints regarding deep fakes. FIRs will be registered against intermediaries with possible action against entities disclosing the origins of objectionable content. A gruesome murder in Delhi's Janta Mazdoor colony involving a 16-year-old brutally killing a 17-year-old boy has shocked the community. The crime, captured on CCTV, exposes chilling details of the assailant bragging about the murder, waving a blood-soaked knife and threatening onlookers. The accused, apprehended by the police and having confessed, allegedly approached the victim for money to buy biryani, leading to a fatal confrontation. Witnesses reported the murderer dancing after the crime. The assailant's mother, acknowledging her son's heavy drinking and past criminal involvement, expressed a desire for him to face consequences. Authorities are investigating the horrifying incident that unfolded on Tuesday night. A political storm has erupted in Karnataka following the Congress-led state government's approval to withdraw a CBI probe against Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shivakumar in an alleged disproportionate assets case. The decision faced immediate backlash from Karnataka BJP Chief B.Y. Vijayendra who deemed it totally illegal and urged Shivakumar to trust the legal process. JDS leader H.G. Kumaraswamy accused the government of protecting the coins, emphasizing the issue's court status. Responding to the controversy, Deputy CM D.K. Shivakumar claimed ignorance of the cabinet decision, citing his absence due to election campaigning. The Congress government defended its move, asserting the case's political motivation. Karnataka Home Minister G. Parameshwara insisted the decision was within the law, while the Karnataka High Court adjourned the hearing on Shivakumar's appeal to November 29. The Kaveri Water Regulation Committee has instructed Karnataka to release 3,216 cusics of water to Tamil Nadu over the next 38 days, altering a previous directive of 2,600 cusics. The decision was made during a meeting in Delhi where Tamil Nadu had initially requested 5,000 cusics daily for 30 days. Karnataka, citing deficient monsoon rainfall and drought conditions, argued against the increase, highlighting its own rainfall deficit. The regulatory body's decision comes and Karnataka's plea to the central government for emergency relief funds due to the ongoing water scarcity and drought situation in several districts. On Friday, India's Securities and Exchange Board, the market regulator, informed the Supreme Court that it would not request additional time to finalize its investigation into billionaire Gautam Adani's group. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta stated that the SEBI's inquiry linked to the Hindenburg report is close to conclusion, with 22 out of 24 cases concluded. This comes after a previous request for contempt proceedings against the regulator. A 
accusing it of not completing the investigation within the specified deadline set by the Supreme Court. Swastik Sairaj Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty, champions of the Asian Games, secured a place in the men's doubles semi-finals at the China Masters Super 750 Badminton Tournament by defeating Leo Rolly Karnando and Daniel Martin. The top-seeded Indian duo showcased an aggressive style of play, defeating the 13th-ranked Indonesian pair 21-16, 21-14 in 46-minute match. In the next round, Satvik and Chirag will face the winner of the quarter-final clash between two Chinese pairs, Hei Ji Ting and Ren Ziang Yu and 8-seeded Liu Yu Chen and Ao Zhuang Yi. The All India Football Federation announced on Friday that it plans to commence its ambitious youth leagues in second week of December, initiating the competition with the under-17 category. To uphold the principles of fair play, the AIFF will implement TW3 tests for the under-13 and under-15 youth leagues, starting in January. As part of the strategy to address issues of age fraud, over 50 teams are expected to participate. It will grant direct entry to the teams from the Indian Super League, I-League, I-League 2 and Elite academics accredited by the AIFF. Renowned filmmaker Rajkumar Kohli, recognized for directing movies like Nagin, Jani Dushman and Naukar Bhimika, passed away on Friday morning at his home, as confirmed by the family friend Vijay Grover. He was 95 years old, Kohli, a prominent director during the 1970s and 1980s, often teamed up with the leading stars of that era. He is survived by his wife, the actor Nishi Kohli and his son, Arman Kohli. Well, that's it for today. For more latest news and updates, subscribe to Delhi Sala Digital.